After 26 years of service, the Oriskany was decommissioned September 1976. She was stricken from the Naval Vessel Register in July 1989 and then sold for scrapping in 1994. It seemed a rather undignified ending to a rather prestigious career. On July 30th, 1997, fate intervened and the contractor defaulted and the ship was repossessed by the United States Navy and new and better decisions were made. There, there she was again. And people talked about how bad she looked, but I thought for 38 years or so, she looked pretty good, really. On May 17, 2006, the USS Oriskany will be turned into the world's largest man-made reef when she has sunk in the Gulf of Mexico, 22 miles off the coast of Pensacola, Florida. I'm a scuba diver, been diving for 40 years. I think it'd be great, you know. I flew on it, I walked on it, got sick on it, slept on it, and now I can go swim through it. I think it's a great idea. Uh, to her being cut up for uh, razor blades is her sitting on the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico, a few miles off Pensacola, for eternity, and that's that's a good thing, I think. Many believe it is a very appropriate and satisfactory ending for her final resting place to be at the very cradle of naval aviation. And the USS Soriskany finally has her dignified ending. She will always be an important, meaningful part of American history, and she will continue to serve her country and the world for future generations to come. I do not want to see the ship. Mm -mm. She was such a beautiful ship at one time. I have seen on television her appearance now and being towed, and, and I just want to remember the way she was. See, you're looking for the touchy-feely, feel-good thing, the weeping, crying, you're not going to get that, at least not out of me, okay? Well, uh, first and foremost, um, I made my decision to make the Navy a career during my time uh, in Risky. The Risky was a very happy ship and a very productive ship, and that makes a big difference. It's the pride you have in your ship, your ability to get the job done. Didn't feel much like a celebrity. Uh, yeah brother carried my new bride across the threshold. I was told they could. I, I, I'm not sure what they had on their mind at that time other than I'm going home. Uh, I remember one time we had a general on board and the captain said, John, run back to the pilot house and show the general how to steer the ship. So that was, that was kind of funny. It's almost like you're on a tourist ship, but she, she was the instrument. But uh, sailors love their ships, and uh, the ship brought me back, which is extremely important. Well, I was 21 when I arrived on the Oriskany, and I was almost 26 when I left. I spent a good part of my early youth on the old Obo. There was a lot of memories, but one that I really remember uh, was the night that the Oriskany ran into the USS Nitro. Now the Nitro was an ammunition ship and I mean talk about an aptly named vessel, the Nitro. We had pulled up alongside the Nitro and some friends and I were up in the shop playing cards and, and chewing the fat and all of a sudden the collision alarm went off and a short time later General Quarters. And I remember racing up to my General Quarters station that was in the top of the island and I uh, ran out onto the signal bridge to see what was going on and there was the mast of the nitro. I mean it was almost close enough to touch. 
And I remember looking at the deck of the Nitro, and they had pallets of bombs laid out on the deck, re ready to come over to the Oriskany. And I'll tell you, there was a lot of heroes that night, because had one of those bombs on a Nitro gone off, uh, the reefing, the sinking that's taking place uh, in the next day or two down here in Pensacola, that would have never happened because the Oriskany already would have been a reef over off the coast of Vietnam 30 plus years ago and it would have had a neighbor on the bottom of the Gulf over there would have been the USS Nitro. Now not everything that happens is bad and as a result of hitting the Nitro uh, a few days later we were back on Yankee Station and we dropped the shaft and a propeller and so of course we had to go up to Yakuska, Japan in the dry dock and while we were up there, a lot of the crew members had an opportunity to see a lot of Japan. I know my friends and I had an opportunity to go to Nikko and Kyoto, and a few of us even climbed Mount Fuji. Well, we got back off of, uh, out of the dry dock, and about a month, month or so later, we're back on Yankee Station, and guess what? We dropped another shaft, another propeller. So we had to go back up to Yakuska for another screw. And I think one of the things that came out of that is the guys on our ship's radio station and, of course, the Oriskany was a carrier, so we had our own TV studio and our own radio studio. Suddenly, they had a new sponsor, the Yakuska Screw Corporation. And I think their motto was, say, guys, next time your, your ship needs the shaft, let Yakuska screw you over. And, of course, I, I'm not sure if they still use the call letters. Chris, that was the call, call letters of our radio station. But I can still remember those G DJs saying, you're listening to the best in Armed Forces Radio at Sea. You're listening to K-R-I-S, Ariskany.